Hello, and welcome to the Creative Playing Podcast Network. Join us as we get to share some great convention panels we were able to attend at CocoCon 2019 up in Phoenix, Arizona. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Hey, how are you guys doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, hi, Dee. How are you doing? I'm tired, honey. How are you doing? Honest. Tired. Uh, I'm just as tired of you as you. I mean, what? Uh, no, no, no. I'm just kidding. We all know it's we're tired of how. There, yeah, yeah. So, I did not, I did not. Say anything, okay? Yeah, we're all sworn to secrecy in this room. Oh, okay. We've heard nothing. So hi, how everyone been doing good on this day? Because this is a Saturday, and this is a this is wow. Wait, wait a minute, Saturday. we haven't even started the parties yet. We haven't even started the parties yet. I am sorry. I am just Here. so thrown. I don't need a microphone. I am. For the recording. For the recording. Otherwise known as Coco Con 2. Yeah. 
No, okay, no, that would be three. <laughs> she can't even throw horns right. What is wrong with this? What is wrong here? I'm tired. <laughs> oh my lord. Now, over here, we have our lovely guest of honor that you have come here to meet, and Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you need to just like accept it and move on, Dee. 
Get it gripped, D. Man, you are not going to get to speak to the manager. I am the manager. So, so everybody's been here basically since yesterday. Yes? Yes. No, okay, you're shaking your head no. You've not been here since yesterday. Where were you yesterday? Oh, man, I understand that. Some of us have been here longer. We don't care. You work for us. We own you. So it's fine. Hi. Hi. We were here and then we had to leave. Really you were here. You were left. Did you bring? <laughs> did you bring cocktails for the rest of us? Um, I could. Here. Okay. You could, but, but you I, didn't. I didn't know what you wanted. I didn't know what you wanted. Cindy's taking orders. Please <laughs> just start writing them down. Last okay. We we have to start with the guests of honor. They're the ones who get first choice of their cocktails. Uh, Cosmo Martini Shaken Well, not stirred, then a water back. Cosmo Martini Shaken Well, not stirred, water back. Gillian, what would be your drink? I'm here for the ice cream. You're here for the ice cream? Okay. Alexander? Double whiskey sour. Double whiskey sour? Am I supposed to remember all this? Okay. I'm not Gillian, I'm here with the ice cream. You're just here for the ice cream? Yeah. Okay, well, then Ernest. You, you actually get to have a cocktail because two people surrender their cocktails. Oh my god. So what would be your cocktail? Cerveza. 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 Okay. Right. Just an advice to uh, my fellow guests, <laughs> my, my advice would be to smart, start smoking and drinking heavily. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, oh, he's talks as if he's an author. Um, <laughs> so... You guys have all had a chance to at least superficially meet our lovely guests, yes? Other than those who worked yesterday. And you've actually been here today. You had a chance to meet at least one or two, yes? Or staff who couldn't be bothered. Or staff who could not be bothered, yes. <laughs> who still is not being bothered. She's just over there going, we have guests of honor, whatever. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, in case you do not know, or in case you need further elucidation on why these are our guests of honor, this is Miss Emily Davenport. Davenport. I always want to put the, yeah, 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 I'm sure you get that all the time. I do. You do, yeah. yeah. No. Ooh, that's not good. And why would they be on magazine covers? What do you do that would get your name on a magazine cover? I write science fiction. <laughs> and then Alexander, what is it that you do? I write music. Okay, he writes music. And sing songs. And sing songs. <laughs> Someday he'll learn to do that into a microphone. Me. He's already spit into it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. You're lucky I didn't lick it. Um, Gillian! Gillian! Is this on? This is on. It's on. It's on. It's on. It's on. Okay. So, what do you do? What is your question? Um, <laughs> what do you do? What makes you so special? I wonder that all the time. <laughs> I know. You need to just accept you're special. I. The whole the I, bus comes for you every day. I paint pictures, and uh, sometimes they're science fiction or fantasy. Oh, I guess that's I guess that's why I'm here. Um, and sometimes there's a bus. Oh, I was gonna say buns are always the best with Gillian. But buns. Monday. 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 We love Monday. 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 I think we're I think we're going off topic. Just like <laughs> I think mean, possibly we're on topic, and you just are not aware of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Edge of the stage, not going to fall off. We're, we're, uh, we're uh, referring to my Facebook page. Everybody follow Gilead Artists on Facebook. Everybody follow. Yeah. Everybody saw the program book. The cover art on that is Gilead. Yeah. 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 And I will yes, say, Gilead did the program art. Facebook, on Facebook, except he's not on Facebook. Are you on Facebook? No. Yeah, I could not tag you. Yeah, I couldn't. We couldn't tag. We you couldn't do diddly with you. Like, yeah, I, I, run, I, run on I couldn't diddle you at all. Because I'm not. My name isn't, but on magazines, it's usually on FBI files and stuff like that. So, <laughs> oh, he's not lying. Uh, so, so 
What is it that makes you so special and possibly <laughs> wanted by the FBI? So, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uh, Coco Con. If you see this weird looking uh, apparatus that's behind us here, uh, everything from Tesla coils, a lot of this apparatus, uh, later on this evening, there's going to be electrical arcs, sparks uh, emanating from this apparatus. And, uh, uh, some of this apparatus, you've seen this before, and you may not realize or recognize it. Uh, this apparatus was first used in the 1931 film Frankenstein with Boris Karloff and Colin Cleve. And I'm gonna, you've seen it in the movies because the man who created these devices, uh, Mr. Ken Strick Fadden, who is now deceased, <laughs> Uh, worked in the film industry and created uh, special effects. They were high voltage special effects for the horror <laughs> films and the science fiction films throughout the 20th century. This was in the days before they had computer generated graphics, so you had to do it the old fashioned way, live with high voltage apparatus. <laughs> and these were used through the Frankenstein movies, Bride of Frankenstein. In fact, the last time these apparatuses were seen live and running, it was the film Young Frankenstein, the Mel Brooks film, uh, 1974. And uh, they got Ken Strick Fadden uh, come out of semi-retirement and uh, set up the machinery, some of the apparatuses for that film. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about those iconic films. Uh, the man who created this stuff, he had pet names for each one of his creations. Uh, Bruce. And I'm going <laughs> to uh, And I'm not going to be sitting up here while he's doing it. <laughs> yeah, so if you are, if you have electronic internal parts, you might want to sit towards the back. If you are from the Victorian era, you're just going to go up in flames. Just don't, don't do this. You're, you're highly flammable. You just are not aware of it. So, hi. See, one of these days, you guys are actually going to respond when I say hi. I'm just going to keep doing it. Hi. 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 There we go. Okay. Those are our guests. There we go. That's not, that's good. See, I don't know if you'd think that people would know just to applaud because it, it, it's the bright lights. It's the bright lights. It really throws it. People are probably thinking, this is a show. And you wait until everyone's over, everything's over, and then you stand and applaud when it's done. Yeah! Yeah, no, when it's done. When it's done. When it's done. Yeah. Can't do ice cream yet. I have a question. You have a question? There's like people in the audience. Yeah, there are people in the audience. Oh. Dee, when you asked me to do the show, you didn't say anything about that. I'm sorry. Just keep looking in the lights. It's all good. Don't go into the lights. Do not go into the lights. Do not go into the lights. Pointy oh, yeah, hat, very distracting. So, what is it that brings everybody to a convention? Cars. Cars. Yeah. Cars, the bus. Yeah. What, what is it that. Yeah, camaraderie. Camaraderie? Mm -hmm. Glutton for punishment, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Yes. Anything? Anybody else have reasons why they come to these conventions? Tell me that'd be free Christmas. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. If you're staying at the hotel, they give you free cookies too. Yeah. If you stay in the hotel, they give you free cookies. Yeah. I think if you're at the convention, they give you free cookies. Well, oh, that's the truth. Anyway, I'm like, that's that's actually really good. Okay. These guys. These guys. There we go. That's. That is actually oh, a really good. That's what he's looking for. Okay. All right. You. So, <laughs> hey. <laughs> these guys use guises. And Edward. Yeah. Yeah. And Ernest. <laughs> yeah. It's use guises. Use guys if you're from Joyce. Use guys. We have this weird Arizona thing oh, that's yeah. you. It, what, what is it? It's you guises. It's, it's you guys. You guys. You guys. No, no, it's not all y'all. No, trust me. It's not all y'all. All y'all is a professional. First of all, there is not enough people in this room for an all y'all. Okay, they're, they're mm, pushing it. Maybe, maybe. 
But all y'all yes. is a proper phrase, and you need to learn it and love it and accept it and embrace it in your heart. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but we here in Arizona, we have this, you guys, yes. you guys. which is really weird. You guys we, is we can't even figure out exactly how to plural the whole situation. Once you have it pointed out to you, you will never not hear it. Okay, it's the weirdest thing. And you can think, um, uh, Spiner, uh, Brent Spiner, he's the one that I first heard, he pointed it out to us, you guyses? And I'm like, oh my god, we say you guyses. We're so illiterate. <laughs> Y'all are so illiterate. <laughs> but, Y'all, what is it that brings you to a con other than being invited and possibly a stipend? <laughs> Free rooms. Free rooms. <laughs> Emily? Wow, you really left me a lot there. It's not the per diem, huh? not the per diem. It's not the nifty room. Okay, um, I guess it would be um, I really do like to talk to readers. And this is the place to do it. All right. Hi, Ernest. How are you doing? Okay. And so, <laughs> what brings you to cons? Well, um, much like any other entertainer, we're very similar to the likes of Tinkerbell. If you don't clap, you don't exist. <laughs> so, yeah, if I want to exist, I am here. Oh my God, he's gonna multiply. Yes. We're gonna be just gonna be multiple uh, Alexanders. <laughs> Gilly, what brings you to cons? Oh, all the hot chicks. No, I, I mean certainly being appreciated. <laughs> you know, I mean that's a, it's a nice thing. Um, you know, coming out, and selling art, how many people come and, and look at the art? It's one thing to put it online. Or it's this big on your Facebook page, and people, oh, that's neat. And then they walk into the room, and it's seven feet tall. And you're like, oh my god! And it's, <laughs> it's really weird. cool to see, yeah, to watch that. I mean, there's that's a really fun experience. It's a little bit like seeing your audience respond to your music on your Instagram. Um, yeah, I love that. Professor Sparks. Uh, very good question. You know, I Thank just you. like to. <laughs> Introduce people to uh, live electrical shows. They, back in the earliest days of electricity, turn of the 20th century, electricity was new in those days, and live electricity shows were very popular uh, in that era. And you know, people would go and see live electrical shows with Tesla coils and high voltage, and uh, enjoy those and learn a little bit about. History and electricity and the evolution, and so on, reviving that, so to speak, and uh, doing these uh, shows at professional conferences. I've been doing uh, high voltage shows for many years at professional conferences. This one, Dr. Frankenstein's Laboratory, is a, the latest iteration uh, of my electrical high voltage shows at uh, cons, conventions, and uh, professional conferences. Uh, professional conferences, because my background is occupational safety and health. <laughs> and uh, having done uh, you know, the keynotes and spectacular electrical things for many years, I thought I'd introduce this to what I called alternative conventions just a few short years ago, science fiction, horror, steampunk uh, festivals, uh, and been very well received at a lot of these conventions, and you just meet great people. Types of things. Uh, there's no fight that could get me. These are just great people, uh, friendly people, and I have a good time, and uh, and everybody enjoys the shows. And there's so many talented people, like my uh, colleagues, the other guests of honor here, uh, you know, doing, uh, uh, demonstrating uh, their particular uh, gifts and skill sets and those things. So uh, it's just I just enjoy working these types of uh, uh, cons, and, and thank you for uh, having me here. So, since this is a meet the grit guest, we're not trying to necessarily be educational or train you how to do anything or anything. We're just trying to get to know you. If you were a tree, 
<laughs> um, <laughs> actually, if you were not doing what you are doing right now, what other things would you be interested in pursuing? What would you grow up to be if you, like Emily, if you had not grown up to be an author, what would you grow up to be? I would be a geologist. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good state to be a geologist in too because it's the Grand Canyon and you know all of these volcanoes and it's a fascinating place. Ernest. <laughs> Alexander. <laughs> Because I love animals. You can tell by the dead things on my <laughs> I killed a plastic donkey. <laughs> oh, the Scoobies are here. Hi, Scooby. <laughs> that's that's Scooby Down and Scooby Doo. So, Gilead, what would you be? What would what would young Gilead have grown up to become if no one had encouraged him? I'd be nothing. Oh, I, I don't know. Um, I, I guess uh, recycling is a huge aspect of what I am doing because all my art is on recycled things, found objects. Um, so I suppose if I could do art, I would be just doing recycling. I think that would be fun. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to look at that. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Oh, Professor Sparks. What would you would be, Professor? Actually, um, you know, I haven't had a very blessed career. I I couldn't imagine. I consider myself an educator first, and perhaps a showman second. Uh, of course, being a successful educator requires a certain amount of showmanship if you're going to be as effective. You know, uh, I mean, teaching electricity and electrical safety and regulatory, it could be very dry and painful. Or alternatively, it could be very exciting and painful. And that looks painful. I don't know. Uh, so, uh, uh, quite frankly, I couldn't imagine doing anything other than I have other interests, but I couldn't imagine doing anything else uh, in my life other than what I have and continue to do in semi-retirement, allegedly. Uh, <laughs> okay, that were and Ernest. <laughs> What would, what would, what would you like to be when you grow up? Look at this. Well, we'll include him. Look at this. We're inclusive. I don't know. Maybe I'd be a mad scientist or something. You got the setting for it right here. And, it, and by the way, a parade of water is coming this way. I saw that things were out. That water was out. And so a parade of water. Yay! Let's hear it for water. Does does Ernest need water? Yeah, he goes. Um, if you could bring two more, because I would love one. Thank you very much. I do not know whose spittle encrusted one this one is, but we're, that's Mark's. Mmm, crusty. Um, there we go. Now, excuse me. I would like it's not a Cosmo. Uh, they messed up the problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the worst are they? Oh, someone actually had some already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. We did it. Well, like the Thanksgiving dinner thing, you know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Our lovely waitress, Dee. Make sure you tip her when you're done. Oh yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's got to do the charity auction. Oh yes, she's biking. Now I'm gonna break from a little bit of what you would normally expect at a guest meeting or not. And, okay, ignore her for the moment. She's laughing because you haven't done anything to me. <laughs> no, um, so, this is a meet and greet. But at the same time, in many ways, this is entirely one directional. What is your name? Philip. Your name? Philip. Andrea. Shut up. No. <laughs> Joseph. Jim. Is there going to be a quiz? <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Your name? Debbie. Same name. Nikki. Yes, sir. Larry. Sir? What was that again? Bruce. Okay, Bruce. Okay. Mark. Mary. Another one named Dee. Hey, what's your name, Dee? I'm Dee. Satan. 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 Yeah. Ivy. Ivy. Very good. And then right there. Bella. Hi, Bella. How you doing? Sam. Alexander and Valerie. Coffee Boy. Oh. Yes, Coffee Boy. <laughs> Sean. Sean. Hey, who's running our sound? Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Susan. Hi, Susan. And you, sir? Penny. Look at that. You have now met. How many people was that? Did anyone keep count? <laughs> but you didn't officially introduce us yet. He didn't really do that to them either. <laughs> Y'all. He's getting there. He's getting better. But you know. Y'all. Meet. You guys. Is these guys. <laughs> <laughs> these people. Meet them. What sat there. <laughs> Ta da! Hi. And, okay. And Ernest. And Ernest. Oh, yeah. And Ernest. Ernest. And Ernest. And Ernest. We do have an affection for Ernest. Do you know who Ernest is, by the way? No, I want to know. Can somebody please enlighten the world? Okay. Ernest. <laughs> In 15 words, who are you? 15 words. Let's see. What wrote you kind of science fiction and, and, and other things that came up? That was pretty damn good. I, I really thought that that was going to be a challenge. But, that makes sense. Yeah, you got some words to spare. Mary to M. Yes. Which still leaves two words. But oh, so there. there. <laughs> and that's why she's a writer. Yes. But okay, that may have just seemed a little weird. But at the mm -hmm. same time, how often do you actually get to, even while you're sitting on a panel? or in a concert, how often do you actually get to hear the voices of everybody that is there to see you? That's a person. Yeah. How many times do you want to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is so bad. It's kind of annoying sometimes, but you know. There's a reason why we don't typically give the a microphone. <laughs> she, she ruins special moments. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I just kind of thought that just going a little bit against what we normally, because we normally think of, oh, we're just going to present all the guests of honor, and we're going to talk about the guests of honor, and da 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 da, -da. And At the same time, we talk about meeting them, though, and it's all one direction. And I think I am speaking on behalf of you all. Feel free to correct me on this. No, actually, I engage my audience frequently at even shows and classrooms, and I will, uh, I will engage them during uh, shows and stuff of all ages. It's just engaging, and it does create a two-way communication, and it draws them in a little bit closer. I believe that's uh, that's. And then you hook jumper cables to <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there's hookups there. I know you're here. I'll talk to you about the answer right. to the show. <laughs> don't, don't give him ideas. There's a, there's a sketch off later that he will not enjoy with those ideas. Um, I'll just tell you right now. Um, but you guys are actually pretty much the main, even though we all gave credentials for why they're all up here. They're actually all up here because of you guys. And that's kind of an exchange that I don't think gets to happen a lot during these meet and greets. Everybody, I mean, we're on stage above everybody else, somewhat what something would call a pedestal. And at the same time, this pedestal means nothing if it doesn't have a foundation. 
So it's not really a pedestal. It is actually just you guys appreciate and they're happy. They appreciate you appreciate. Does that sound right? I think it's not nice to call people a pedestal. <laughs> <laughs> what, would, what would you rather we call you? Right. Just um, be careful. How you Ernest. Right? We'll, call, we'll call you Ernest. No, um, it's the importance of being Ernest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Does it? <laughs> Pardon. It, there's a, we, I'm not sure you're aware of this. There's a desert outside. <laughs> and sometimes. You just got to rehydrate, regardless of whether you were in the middle of a thought or not. Uh, okay, there's a little bit more rehydrating needs to go on. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so dry. We're supposed to be having rain, by the way. It's supposed to be a monsoon. It's monsoon season. Mm. You sure about that? So, <laughs> what is one of the things that you would say that you have actually, what is, what is your best interaction, or one of your favorite, one of your favorite interactions with? You guys. You guys. <laughs> them guys. And this time we'll start with Professor Spark. Well, I feel like this, I've always shown Dr. Frankenstein's laboratory. Uh, as a special event, I was doing some safety, electrical safety training for an electric utility up in the upper peninsula of Michigan, Marquette. You couldn't get any farther north. And uh, they brought me in. They were tra I was training alignment. I wasn't alone. There were some other trainers. I was doing a, a segment during the day, and because I was only doing a short segment, and I was driving to Marquette, Michigan, I said, you know, if you want, I'll bringing equipment in the van and all, close out the convention, the conference day with the eyeball to show. And I said, you know, um, that's great, we'd love to do that, but would you mind doing it at the close of that? Because we have a full agenda. <coughs> and, if, and then plus afterwards, they don't get an overtime issues or something. Mm -hmm. I says, well, you're thinking outside the box. I says, how about this? Just for I'll throw it out there. I says I'll do it even later. Maybe invite the whole plant or others if you want, other than the linemen or those who are going to be present for the safety training. I says, do you be willing to do that? And I says, absolutely. I says, what's going on in Marquette, Michigan on Wednesday night? <laughs> you know what's happening, and what do they have for family events that you know families could attend? That was an opportunity, I thought, and I offered it. And they said, let's do it. So they opened it up and invited all of their employees of the, uh, it was Upper Peninsula Power Corporation, what they call Upco. And they opened it up, invited all the families, and there was children of all ages there, including the linemen. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it was conference room set up, much like we have here. And the whole front row, it was like 30 across, was all youngsters, all the kids. And they were right up front. They were so enthralled with this. I mean, the president of the corporation even showed up, but I would engage the kids throughout the show. They were so enthralled. He said, what do you think? Do you like that? Yeah. What you think? And, you know, talk with the kids. And they all had a faith. Of course, meanwhile, their parents, the linemen especially, were standing out on the back of the room, you know, all excited. Stuff because you know, linemen are just kids that are big body kids, <laughs> and that was uh, a very memorable experience. I love it when you know youngsters attend, which is another benefit to doing the, the uh, conventions what I call these alternative conventions <laughs> because professional conferences rarely will you see children at the professional conferences, but at the conventions and cons and steampunk festivals. All ages, including families with youngsters, and I love the youngsters because they get some history or they see some things that they would not ordinarily see uh, and learn some things about American film history, a little bit about electricity, those sorts of things. So, your interaction, uh, your favorite, or one of 
You don't need to pick love favorite. Well, there's some pretty good food in the staff line. <laughs> Interaction with oh, oh. secret. Yeah. Oh, um, I, you know, all year long I'm at home entirely by myself, except for the cat, and uh, and painting. And I give whatever response I get from myself. Sometimes is the most eye opening thing that can ever happen to you is when you do something without thinking, you know, like and somebody goes, Why did you do that? And then you stop and you go, Why do I do that? Yeah. And uh, and you get to analyze mm -hmm. things and, and and but that that uh, first person uh, it, there's an instant gratification to you being in front of the audience, which happens to me approximately once a year. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I just I just which I do every day, but it's, it's such an entirely different context. So, I can see. Alexander? Well, every show I do is being connected to me, so directly connected to my audience, so it's kind of hard to pull one out of many. The, the, the only one I could think of was the one where I had a song called Storytelling, and I had written it for Jim Henson. I had started to perform it shortly after we lost him, and uh, the audience caught on to the chorus very quickly. And by the end of the song, they were singing with me. And, um, <laughs> sorry, but uh, um, the last line of, of the song, as I wrote it, was, um, I'm new to the magic side of heaven. And by the end of the song, I changed it to we. Because I realized that it wasn't just me anymore. And um, so I finished the song, and yeah, there wasn't a dry eye, including mine. And, uh, and, I, and I said to the audience, I, said, I, think, I think he may have heard us. And little did they all know after that that at the end of the night, we went out and put on my brand new car and beautiful, clear, oddly clear night. It was a shooting star that went across the sky, and if you know the Henson work, you know that was his trademark. And yeah, they just loved it to show off. So that would be my story. Yeah, I like it. And, and before we go, I do have to point out something that was. Did anyone else, while Alexander started telling the story, just like, oh my God, that voice? Just like, well. I really like. <laughs> oh my god! This is the most amazing voice ever. What's happening? I don't. I think there was a frog involved. I don't know. I wasn't listening to the words anymore. <laughs> Emily. Well, there uh, there are these book dealers in the dealers room uh, that you may have met. We um, Marty and Alice and Sylvia. And uh, Marty especially is, he knows all of the books. And he knows them going all the way back. And he knows all, not just the, the authors and the books, but he knows the ideas from the story. And every time I meet him, and you know, I'll, I'll poke around and I see some books that I remember and he'll say, oh, you like that? Well, you should hear about this author. And then he starts telling me about the story and the author, and he just, you know, like, well, of course he just tells me the book, but, <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, it's like, uh, when he talks about the stories and the ideas, he reminds me why I love science fiction and fantasy, and then I, I, that's a really nifty feeling to have, so of course I grab a bag full of books now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you may have to peel yourself away, uh, because you've got a panel to go to, but it'll never be the guy's fascinating and, yes. and always recording himself. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought I did. There we go. <laughs> I was like, going, I think I can.
turn this off. <laughs> Ernest. You still have two le words left here. Two words left. Okay. What is, no, I'm kidding. No, what is, what is, this, this is not even a matter of like, Ernest and Ernest. No, really, Ernest, what is one of your favorite interactions that you've had? Coming here to some obscure, because I report to some obscure magazines in the world. I mean, weird ones, but I, I, I was like, God, nobody read that. <laughs> and yeah, it keeps happening. I think that someone will come up with a copy of this thing that I'm sure nobody's read. <laughs> you know, I, 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 didn't think, I, I didn't think anybody bought it, you know, and all that. Uh, all that was published in some, you know, some, some garage somewhere, you know, somewhere <laughs> like, in, in, in Montana or something like that. And, uh, and they'll have it there, and they're, and they're going to, and I said, okay, I love this story, and all that. And uh, that, 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 that keeps happening. And, and, I, and like I say, for, for years, I thought, I thought uh, basically I was kind of a failure. So I went, I did, uh, New York treats me like the most uh, talented leopard they ever met. <laughs> <laughs> and and but when all these weird, these weirdos out there who, uh, who decide to start magazines and websites and everything, want, want, and, and everything want to publish me, just make money, but there are people who just not there to like it, and they, they, they come to these things, you know. I mean, I, I uh, and uh, as I would say right, right, regularly, I, I, they, I, I keep finding that they, they know who, people know people know who I am, who I don't know, and all that. And they, 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 they think I'm this big famous guy, and I kind of laugh at that, <laughs> you know. Uh, but it does make it worthwhile to come to these things. I, I, I uh, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's, it's, uh, they, they, uh, it's important, again, like I said, uh, there's often these. Uh, I don't quite. I, I often don't, don't quite remember. But like I said, this, this, this person just comes up with this, you know, this weird little, little magazine or book, and where they, uh, they and they go, hey, you know, this, this, I really love this story, mm -hmm. and that, that, that's it. That, 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 that basically is why I do it. You know, I mean. No. Okay. I keep passing things out to the audience, and that's me, the guests of honor. But there's there is a method to my madness. There's not just madness behind the madness. Mike, can you bring Bella up here? Now I don't know if all of our guests of honor have had a chance to meet Bella. Bella. Oh, this is Bella. She is an aspiring writer, I believe. Very creative. Asks beautiful questions during panels. And I would like each one of you, please, for Bella, tell her what is the thing that you think will help, the best piece of advice that you can give her to pursue her creative endeavor. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a question. Remember that a rough draft is something you can thrash around and it doesn't have to be perfect. So you you do your rough draft, right? Make a copy of it, and then you try different things with it. And that way you will feel, you know, like you're really like, oh, it doesn't have to be a perfect no, just try different things. That that's what a rough draft is for. Thank you very much. Ernest? Well, okay. Uh, never give up. That, that, that is uh, the, the difference between someone who actually uh, is successful, becomes a writer, or anything, and someone who doesn't, uh, doesn't succeed is that the, the, the people who give up. I, I was the only, uh, well, well, when I was in, uh, took a creative writer class in college, it was like ancient times, I told you, uh, in the 70s. Uh, a teacher said, if we're lucky, one person in this room is going to get published, and it was me. And uh, I was not the best writer in that room, I don't think. I wasn't the, I wasn't the most talented in everything. I was the person who wanted it the most and didn't give up. And uh, that's, that's why I became what I became today. That's why I got that here. Yeah, I want to take my weekly voice back and give her his advice instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tenacity. That really is the number one thing. Yeah. Alexander? Well, this is a check because I'm not a writer. I'm not 
the best. You are still a creative individual. We have all creatives up here. That's very true. Um, my experience has been that when I try to, when I, when I try to do something and I, I, I have to work at it really hard, um, and I try to be like, I think, I, I feel like there's a pressure for me to be clever or, or do something a certain way, I tend to find that I get myself in trouble. Because it, it, then I'm, I'm not really listening to what, what is there that's trying to get out. I'm trying to make it what I think the latest expectation is from the world outside. And those songs have never made the light of day. <laughs> they always sound contrived. And then when you get about halfway through it, I'm like, this is not Scottish. <laughs> and if you don't know what that reference is, you'll have to ask a, an adult to tell you. Well, but, uh, we're going to assume that she's younger than the rest of us, and that she maybe hasn't seen the same things we have. Right, there, there's no yeah. one saying if it's not Scottish, it's not good. So, okay. um, so I will write these things, and I will, I'll say, no, I'm going to be really tricky, I'm going to do this and this. And this is the, the fad right now in writing, so I'm going to use this fad, because it will sell. The moment I do that, the moment I've done that, I have stepped right off of the actual creative process. And so I would, I would warn you against that temptation. Go ahead. It, it's a little bit like what the others have said, but write a lot because a lot of it's going to be garbage. <laughs> it, it a, lot, a lot of what all of us does is garbage. I'm just oh, saying, yeah. you know, there's a lot of songs. You work and you work and you work. That's crap. You know, it, 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 I've got so many sketches that I just uh, started a fire with. <laughs> and that's fine. I mean, that's that's right. You know, so write something and, and it's it's just don't be so in love with it that you think you know. Well, I have to get this right. You know, if it's not working, put it aside. And, and like we were saying, you know, you remix it. Re change it up and, and, and whatnot. So uh, we write a lot or draw a lot, and then out of that pile, we get to pick the best ones. And that's what we show people, and they think everything we do is wonderful. When in fact, we've thrown away a whole bunch of stuff that is not. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm giving away the secrets, but that's <laughs> right. So yeah, that's fine. Bella? Bruce, I would believe you still have Feet on the ground, keep reaching for the stars. <laughs> so, you were not anticipating this happening, to you, were you? <laughs> no, no, no. You're, you're probably a little bit like going, I kind of wish he had not learned my name. Because <laughs> there's moments of like side eye, like, <laughs> Why is he doing this to me? But here's the trick. I saw you in that panel. You asked great questions. These are guests of honor. And I expect that one day, one of these chairs is going to be yours. Just remember, and here's the other trick. There's a trick to what I just said. Yeah, you fell here. Uh, right? because, <laughs> yeah. because while I asked them to give you advice about how to continue your creative journey, what they actually gave was advice to everybody in this room about life. It's a rough draft. You get to scratch it out and try again. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Suddenly, my I I got all like over here, and then I was like, "What? Be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. Don't do it. Yeah. Yes, yes, 
So <laughs> listen to your own voice. And then do a lot of it, okay? Which really, yeah, do a lot of it. And become a radio DJ. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and just keep reaching for the stars. <laughs> Does that work for you? Yes. Does that work for you? <laughs> Everybody. A future guest of honor, Stella. Okay, you can sit down. Move on. Move on. I'm done with you. Move. Thank you, Bella. Good job, So, now how do you guys feel that you gave everybody life oh, advice? And they were a captive audience. <laughs> Yeah, see? See, I told you. A method. There's a method. <sighs> Mark's over there like going, he just got lucky. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, what time is it? I just read. Is it time? See that red light? Don't you see the red light? Oh, is that? It's no, it's been just changing colors. I'm not even going to pay attention <laughs> to what's going on. You were at the meeting when this was all explained. I was oh, not at the meeting. No, we were not at that meeting. I was not at that meeting, so feel free no. to no. shut down. <laughs> um, <laughs> shut. It's two minutes. Or five minute warning counting oh, down. The, the red is five minutes? No, two. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So wrap it up. Yes, that's what I was going to do. Hey, what, what happened? It went from two minutes, it went from five minutes to two minutes to one minute. What the hell? Okay, so, or heck. What the heck? Okay, Len, shut up. You're eating up my time. Um, <laughs> Emily. Gracious, gracious, Emily. Where can we all see you next after ice cream? Probably sometime tomorrow. Well, um, well, 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 well <laughs> I've got one panel tomorrow, and it's in the evening. And I I don't remember where it is because I did not bring my notes. Because <laughs> I just thought I was going to be there only with people. I didn't know I was going to be in there. Okay. Uh, it would uh, probably be in the yellow. In the yellow. Okay. Uh, or, sorry, actually, this would be in the red. In the red. Okay. <laughs> I'm not thinking it's red. Oh, that's okay. It's. It's just my master list of things. So that's today. So this is tomorrow. It's, it's the panel about M, and it's somewhere at some time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. oh it's, it's, not, it's, it's a spotlight it's that you're not in. My yeah, yeah, it's your spotlight. Yeah, spotlight. It's, okay. yeah she has a spotlight. <laughs> there go. That's how come I'm not finding it, because it's over here. It has a spotlight oh. where we're going to get to meet her one on one. All right, <laughs> and that is tomorrow at five. Okay. Five? We'll be gracious yes. and give them a little extra. Okay. <laughs> Ernest. <laughs> How are you doing? I'll probably be there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Alexander, where will you be next after the ice cream? After the ice cream, um, in 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 the in the instrument petting zoo. Then Instruments Petting Zoo, I think that's Soro, right? Yes. 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 Okay, at what time? 6.30. 6.30. And, but tomorrow's the big day. Tomorrow's the big day. That's the concert? For... That's the concert and the debut of uh, the film that I did. Oh. Scream Actor in and that will be uh, the soundtrack for it. Well, look at that. Ooh, he's, he's, a, he's a triple threat. <laughs> And I, we mean that sincerely, not like when we say that about Jennifer Lopez. Um, <laughs> Gillian, where will we see you next? I have no idea. Um, I, I, off the top of my head, I don't want to know my schedule. I do want to say um, I am absolutely <laughs> at your disposal all weekend. Um, if you see me you know, in a panel, ask me a question. If you catch me in the hall, ask me a question. If I'm heading for the bathroom, on Monday, please leave me alone. Um, <laughs> if I'm in the if I'm in the restroom, you know, if, if I'm in the restaurant, uh, they're sitting at a table. Um, you do not have to ask. Just pull up a chair and and talk to me anytime. Don't pull up a don't pull up a chair next to him in the restroom. No, not in the restaurant. Restaurant. 
Yeah. Into the I'm restaurant. Yeah. If I'm heading for the bathroom, leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the only rule. Spotlight Monday for Gilead. Spotlight Monday for Gilead. Your next Ooh, your next panel is at 10 a.m. tomorrow. 10 a.m. tomorrow. Next tomorrow uh, uh, recycling. recycling. Oh yeah, the recycling one. I should just ask you, shouldn't I? Yeah, you know what his life is. Okay. Professor Spark, you're going to be here. I'm going to be right here on the stage at 7.30 this evening uh, for Dr. Frankenstein's laboratory show. So Woo! It will be electrifying! Yes. Uh, I would say that I was shocked at that bad pun, but I'm not. Oh, you have a quick question? I just have a question. Is that an original Frankenstein? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to explain this tonight. No, no, no. Because it was in my uncle's movie. And I just pulled it up. So oh, who's your uncle? I was in a lot of movies. Who's your uncle? Uh, Frank Slendry. He did Blake Blackenstein. Oh, Blackenstein! Oh, oh my god! I I have that movie. Oh, I have a few. <laughs> I, 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 See, now, now you have something to discuss at the ice. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just so, pulled up the props. So, everybody. You guys have met our guest of honor. And, okay. and you know what the time now means to do this. It's time to go upstairs and get some ice cream. Go upstairs and get some ice cream. Thank you all. Go have fun. Hello, this is Eric. And Wendy Strzok with Stone Valley Hobby and Games. We sell board games, card games, role-playing games, and supplies. We have thousands of Magic the Gathering cards available, carry Kickstarter products, and work with veteran-owned small businesses to bring you our own line of products. We are a small business retailer, but we offer competitive prices, a loyalty system, and free shipping on orders over $100. As a military veteran myself, I'm a strong supporter of our armed forces, their families, and contractors out there doing the hard job. So any order from an AA, AE, or EP address will be shipped absolutely free. Remember, StoneValleyGames.com where we take your leisure seriously. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening.